Helen and Dylan go to the movies. Can you spot anything odd in this place? There's a spider hiding in this guy's popcorn. Whoa. This lady has a working camera, which is not allowed in the movies. Oh. The seats are numbered in a random order in this row, and there's a monster hiding behind the seats. Can you spot a criminal among these two truck drivers? The second guy is just shipping tomatoes, but someone scrawled the word help on the window of the first truck. Therefore, the first driver is the criminal. Can you guess which driver is more dangerous? The second one, who uses such weird decor for his car? Breaking news, someone stole exclusive diamond shoes from the local museum. Many people visited the exhibition that day, but the criminal had left no clue. The police arrive at the crime scene. Detective Smith checks the camera records and spots the thief right away. Mm -hmm. What about you? Something about this lady is very suspicious. Her height increases in the second footage. This probably means that she's wearing the stolen diamond shoes. Kelly throws a pajama party, but one of her guests is a criminal. Can you guess who? This lady is a thief. She hid the stolen items inside a pillow. Let's check how eagle-eyed you are. Can you spot three differences between these two pictures? Here they are. What about these pictures? Are they identical? Nope, there are three differences. Can you see three differences here? Here they are. Great job. Yes. Philip runs a publishing house. One day, he gets an anonymous message. His best illustrator, Victor, has a secret relationship with one of his female co-workers. Oh. Only four ladies work in Philip's farm. Sheila is an SMM manager. She has just returned from the Maldives. It was her honeymoon. Bella is a content manager. She's very shy and lives with five dogs. Lily is a part-time writer. She's single and parties all the time. And Kelly is an office manager. She's very ambitious and writes her own book in her spare time. Can you guess Victor's secret crush? Bella. Philip has white dog hair on his jacket, just like Bella. Crystal is a doctor. She arrives at a medical conference and takes several pictures with her colleagues before the event. In an hour, the local janitor finds Crystal unconscious in the storage room. Later, Crystal gets better and tells the police, I was walking to the toilet. The last thing I remember was someone pushing me from behind. I don't know who did it. Police questioned all the doctors. Everyone claims that they were listening to the report when the attack took place. Officers examine the pictures before the conference and immediately identify the criminal. What about you? Crystal tried to protect herself and tore the string on the criminal's neck. Oh my god. So it was this guy with a broken badge. Harold is the richest man in town. This evening, he lost his memory because of a car accident. His only family is his daughter. When Harold wakes up in a hospital, two ladies claim to be his daughters. One of them is lying. Can you help Harold identify the real one? There's a photo frame near Harold's bed with a picture of him with his daughter. She has a mole on her cheek, and this lady too. So she's the real daughter. Peter gets lost in a haunted house and finds three doors. 
He needs to choose one of them to escape. There's a cute family of polar bears behind the first door. A couple of hungry, angry wolves are waiting behind the second door, and they haven't been eating for seven years. And there are hundreds of venomous snakes behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? The second one. Wolves can't survive without food for so long, so they're not a threat anymore. Mary is heading back home from work through a forest road. Somewhere along the way, she gets lost. She comes across three caves. Mary needs to choose one of them to go ahead. There are venomous scorpions inside the first cave. They can't wait to bite Mary. Inside the second cave, there's a tiger that will eat her alive. And inside the third cave, there are man-eating bats. Which cave is more or less safe? If you noticed, the sun is still up. It's daytime and bats are sleeping. So the third cave is the safest option for Mary. Detective Smith gets a task to investigate a robbery. He questions a witness who saw the thief escaping. He says, in my car's mirror, I saw a masked man driving away in panic, but I wrote down the number of his car. Detective Smith takes the note with the number. Police find four cars with similar number plates. Detective Smith carefully examines all four cars and figures out which one of them belongs to the robber. How? Since the witness looked at the car number through his mirror, the image was reflected. It means that this was the original car number. Amy lives with her three sisters. She's a professional violinist. Her sister always complains that she loves music more than her own family. One day, Amy leaves for the gym, and when she returns home in the evening, she discovers that all her super expensive violins are broken. Oh, God. She immediately calls the police. Detective Smith arrives and interrogates everyone. Amy's elder sister, Sarah, says, I was sleeping the whole time. I don't know anything. Detective Smith asks her what the other sisters were doing at the time. They were both reading books and eating dinner in the living room. Only the younger sister was having fun at a party downtown. Detective Smith immediately realizes who broke the violins. What about you? If Sarah was sleeping, how did she know who was doing what? Duh. This implies that she's hiding something. A woman in tears enters Detective Smith's office and asks for his help. She explains, I was walking down the road when a man approached me from behind, snatched my phone from my hand, and ran away. But Detective Smith suspects three people and invites all of them. But everyone says that they didn't steal the lady's phone. Detective Smith checks their phones and immediately understands who did it. Can you guess who snatched the phone? Take a look at the wallpapers. This is the lady's dog, so the first guy stole her phone. Oh, no. After a particularly large snowfall, Chuck walks outdoors. He discovers a weird thing. He has half as much snow in his yard as his neighbors, but it seems like Chuck is not surprised at all. Can you guess why? Simple, Chuck's yard is half the size of his neighbors. Vicky is filming a video blog about this haunted house. Suddenly, she freaks out because this place is full of frogs. How many frogs can you see in this picture? The correct answer is 11. Vicky runs away to the basement and sees a creepy collection of clown masks. How many masks can you spot? This one is not a mask, it's a portrait. Philip is walking down the street. Suddenly, a woman approaches him from behind and sneaks his wallet. She runs away and hides in one of the houses. Philip follows her. The owner of the house is inside. Philip asks him, 
Has anyone visited you today? The owner replies, Nope, neither have I left the house. I live here alone and work from home. After hearing the owner's words, Philip knows for sure that this guy is a liar. Oh. How come? There are three cups of hot tea at the table and female sandals standing near the door. So he's probably an accomplice of the thief. Now, what would you say if someone invited you to visit a chocolate yeah. factory and try every sort of sweets they have there? Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? But what if I told you that after you tasted all kinds of treats, the crazy factory owner wouldn't want to let you go? To get away, you need to solve all these riddles. You've got three cups of hot chocolate. One of them will make you sleepy. Can you figure out which one? Only one of the cups isn't steaming. Must be because it's an ice drink. The insane chocolatier must have put sleeping pills in the ice cubes. Don't drink it. Now the factory owner wants to play a short riddle game with you. If you solve all the brain teasers, he'll give you the keys and let you go home. So let's begin. How do you spell handy in just two letters? That's how. What do you call a bear with no teeth? The gummy bear. (laughs) Why did the boy put candy under his pillow? Because he wanted to have sweet dreams. What types of beans don't thrive in the garden? Jelly beans, of course. Now, you need to find all the sweets the chocolatier has hidden here. Pancake, donut, ice cream, candy, and cookies. Well done! To get further, you need to choose the right door to get through. You've got a keychain that says 4, but there are only 3 doors in front of you. Which door should you choose? The one on the left. The symbols on the doors are actually numbers. Once you open the needed door, you're presented with the next brain teaser. How do programmers like their candy corn? Well, bite-sized. What type of candy is never on time? Choco late. I'm made of two colors, and I look like a hook. You'll give me a lick, but I'm not something you cook. What am I? A candy cane. Now, how about this tricky riddle? What's red, white, and blue? It's a sad candy cane. A group of men walks into a candy store. There are two fathers and two sons. They each buy a candy bar for 50 cents. 
The total for all the candy bars is $1.50. How is it possible? Well, there are just three people. A grandfather, a father, and a son. Imagine purchasing two different pieces of candy. Together, they cost $1.10. One candy costs $1 more than the other candy. So, what is the price of each piece of candy? One is 5 cents, and the other is a dollar 5 cents. What does a candy cane say to another candy cane during a strong storm? Hurry, cane! You've almost reached the end of this challenge. You see gates. You need a password to open them. Solve this puzzle, and the answer is your password. The answer is 20. Congrats, you're free to go. But it's not the end of your adventures. Now you need to play the role of a detective and help some people who are in trouble. An important secret document is missing, and Justin has to Uh find it before his boss comes back from his vacation. The guy has found out that only three people in his department could have taken the document. When the papers disappeared, Randy was in his office analyzing a new case, Johnny was taking a shower before his regular gym workout, and Kayla was at her firearms training. Who took the document? It was Johnny. Hey, who takes a shower before a workout? Detective Robinson was invited for dinner at a suspect's house. The potential criminal offers him three dishes to choose from. The detective examines the dishes very attentively. Look at them and say which dish is safe to eat. These chocolate chip cookies look fine, until you notice that the chocolate chips are actually bugs. The steam over this bowl with soup is suspiciously green. This dish is likely poisoned. The only safe option is apples. Look at this tiny worm. If it can feed on the apple and survive, it's most likely okay to eat. Now you find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize one of the pictures doesn't belong there. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. Linda is in a cafe with her boyfriend, and their date isn't going very well. At one point, they both get angry and start fighting. Suddenly, their waiter comes up to their table and hands something to Linda. It's a note with a strangely written word. Linda is confused. What does it mean? Can you figure it out? It's a rebus puzzle. The waiter is worried and asks Linda, Are you in trouble? In the land of green glass doors, there are books but no words, riddles but no answers, sheets but no blankets, cherries but no oranges. Can you name something else that you can find in the land of green glass doors? It can be any word that has double letters in it. 
If you take your friends to the movies and you're paying, what is cheaper? To invite two friends at the same time or to invite one friend twice? Uh oh. It will cost you less to invite two friends at once. This way, you'll have to buy three tickets. If you invite one friend twice, you'll pay for four tickets. A police officer called Mark was questioning Mary, a suspect in a tricky smuggling case. The girl refused to talk. At one point, she shouted, I'll drown my phone in this cup filled with coffee and you'll never find out the truth. But Mark was totally unbothered by her threat. Why? The cup was filled with coffee beans. They would do no harm to the gadget. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. A police officer came to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there. But by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said that he had run after the thieves, but he had to stop to lace his boot. When he crouched near an emergency exit, the door opened and hit him on the head, and he lost consciousness. When he came back to his senses, the criminals had already left. The officer immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third security guard. All emergency doors open outward for safety reasons. Detective Roland finished his working day and decided to drop by his favorite coffee shop. But while he was ordering his cappuccino, someone took his wallet. He only saw a man's retreating figure. The detective ran after him and saw the man driving away in a black car. Roland jumped into his own car and started following him. He couldn't drive too fast since it was raining. In a few minutes, the black car disappeared around the corner. When the detective got there, he saw three similar black cars parked in front of an apartment building. It didn't take him long to understand which car belonged to the thief. How did he find out if he didn't see the man's license plate? The ground under the first and third cars is dry, but beneath the second car, it's wet. It means it has just arrived. You find yourself in the middle of a forest, confused and barefoot. You see three paths in front of you. One is covered with burning coals. Another is freezing cold. And the third path is littered with sharp nails. Which path should you choose? the second path. All that ice is bound to be gone soon. It's too close to hot coals. Hey, look at these couples. Can you spot anything weird here? Seems like the only real wife is the one on the right. She looks grumpy, but she is authentically human. Meanwhile, the lady on the left must be a robot. Just look at her legs. A local bank's money was stolen right in the middle of the day. But no one noticed that. Several days later, the room where the money used to be stored was found completely empty. There was just one note saying 7718. The police arrested three suspects, Bill, Jeff, and Cody. But the officers didn't know which of them was guilty. They invited a famous detective to crack the mysterious case. And the detective managed to decipher the note immediately. Can you do it too? (laughs) 
So turn the paper upside down. This way, the numbers turn into a name, Bill. The man wants to enter an exclusive club, but he doesn't know the password. Another man walks up to the entrance. The doorman says 12, and the man says 6, and is allowed to enter. Another man approaches. The doorman says 6, the man says 3, and the doorman lets him in. Thinking he's heard enough, our guy walks to the door. When the doorman says 10, he says 5. But he isn't allowed to enter. What should he have said? Three. The correct answer is the number of letters in the word the doorman says. Martin was a robber. One day, he was trying to escape from the police after robbing a bank. He had three gold bars in his arms, each weighing 20 pounds. Ooh. The only way to get away was to cross a bridge, which could only support 220 pounds. The three bars of gold weigh 60 pounds, and Martin weighed 180 pounds. Uh Could he cross the bridge without getting rid of any of the bars? Now Martin can't leave a bar of gold and come pick it up later. So the only solution is to make those bars fly. To make it happen, Martin must juggle them. This way, only two bars will add extra weight to the bridge, while the third one will always remain airborne. Voila! 180 plus 20 plus 20 equals 220. So the bridge can totally handle it. However, Martin couldn't handle it because he couldn't juggle. And the police got their man. A thief entered a high-end boutique and forced the shop assistant to open the safe. The shop assistant said, The code for the safe is different every day, and if you harm me, you'll never get the code. But the thief managed to guess the code on his own. How did he do it? The thief was smart. The code to the safe was the word different, just as the shop assistant said. A wealthy businessman, Mr. Ben Swift, was taken away and locked up in a dark room. His phone had almost no charge. He could only send one message. He knew that someone could be spying on his phone, so he decided to send a message with a code to a high school friend, John Smith, who had a detective agency. He remembered that in high school, they would cipher messages to each other, replacing each letter with the one to the left. So he sent this. Can you guess what it means? It's not gibberish. Once you decipher it, the message reads accountant. So it seems his accountant is to blame. You're wandering through the jungle when, all of a sudden, you see a magnificent ancient castle. You enter it and see its inhabitants. It's kind of hard to say if they're friendly or not, but hey, look, they've just fetched you some snacks. Still, you can tell from their grins Uh that these snacks might be a trap for you. You can't say no to them and need to choose something to eat. There are four muffins in front of you. They all look yummy and your mouth is watering. One of the inhabitants, who seems to be the leader, tells you that the first muffet has some fermented cabbage inside. The second is swarming with live ants. The third has mud instead of chocolate cream, and the fourth one has aki fruit inside. So, Uh which dessert should you opt for? A muffin with fermented cabbage may sound weird, but it's safe to eat. You've tried fermented cabbage, aka kimchi, before, and you loved it. For those who love unusual stuff, The fourth muffin is okay, too. Aki fruit is delicious when cooked properly. As for the ants and mud muffins, I'd pass. Lucy is a nail technician. Her services are free to anyone who wants to set up an appointment. However, most people still end up paying her. How so?
Lucy only does one hand for free, so most people who come end up paying the full price. They don't want to look weird with their nails done only on one hand. Poor Kathy lived with a stepmother and three wicked stepsisters. Her dream was to go to a lit party, which she had been waiting for a year. Her stepmother, Evelyn, never let Kathy go anywhere. But this time, Evelyn decided to let Kathy go as soon as she had finished with all her tasks. The stepmother asked Kathy to bring her some water, but she gave her a colander to carry the water. <laughs> How can Kathy bring the water uh -oh. if she has nothing but a colander? Kathy needs to freeze some water and put it in the colander. It'll take some time to melt. When Evelyn gets that colander full of ice, technically, it'll be full of water. Jeremy got lost while driving. So he found the nearest town and decided to spend the night in a hotel. After checking in, he went to the restaurant. Suddenly, the lights went off and everyone fell asleep. The next morning, Jeremy had a terrible headache and he couldn't remember anything. Look at these two photos. They were taken before and after the lights went out. Can you guess what happened? Look, there are some balloons in the first photo, but none in the second one. They must have been filled with sleeping gas. Someone wanted everyone to sleep. Jenny went grocery shopping and bought a lot of milk, yogurt, meat, and cheese. When she came back home, she realized that she had nowhere oh, no. to store all these products as her fridge was already full. How can she save all the food she bought? Jenny needs to revise the stuff in her fridge. Look, there's a pack of rice, some chips, and even cookies. These products don't need to be stored in the fridge. Once she takes them out of the fridge, she'll have enough space to store the dairy products and meat she bought. Twiggy's got her two piggies. Alex grooves with his two wolves. And Tony has a pony. They're all on the shore of a vast and dangerous river. They need to get across, and there's only one small raft nearby. But it's not as simple as it might seem. There are five rules the guys need to follow. Rule number one, the raft can only carry two of them. Number two, only humans can row. Number three, the piggies can't ride with Alex unless Twiggy is around. Number four, the wolves can't ride with Twiggy without Alex. And finally, number five, the pony can only ride with Tony. How can they all get across? First, they need Tony on board. He needs to take one of the wolves across the river. The rules don't prohibit it. When he comes back, Alex takes the second wolf across the river. Then Alex goes back alone. Twiggy joins him and they go to the other bank where Twiggy leaves Alex and goes back alone. She gives the raft to Tony and his pony, and they go to the other bank. When they reach it, Alex takes the raft and goes back to pick up Twiggy. He picks her up, they go back, and Twiggy leaves Alex there. After that, she goes back to pick up her pigs one by one. Finally! I thought this was never going to end. <laughs> Here's Hudson. He's a college teacher. It's the last day of the semester, so he has a bunch of paperwork in his office. Suddenly, someone turns off the electricity in the entire building. Hudson goes to the basement with generators. There he sees a turned-off switch and three people standing next to it. They all say they didn't touch anything, but one of them is lying. The janitor says, The lights went out when I came here to clean up. Rebecca says, I'm a new student. I got lost in the corridors and accidentally got here. And Nick says, I'm a last-year graduate. 
I came here to find a toy owl, a souvenir I had hidden here many years ago. Who's lying? The janitor has a bucket and a mop, so he's not lying. There's a toy owl in the corner of the room, so Nick is telling the truth. Rebecca is lying. It's the end of the semester, so she can't be new at this time. One of Hudson's students, Paul, has a crush on another student named Liza. Once he got a note from her saying she liked him. So Paul decides to write her back and ask her out. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember which desk is Liza's. There are two possibilities. Can you guess which desk is the one he needs? If you remember, the note was written in green ink. There's a similar green pen lying on the desk on the right. So this is most likely Liza's desk. After classes, Hudson is leaving the building and faces a group of his students. They ask him to take their picture. Can you spot an odd detail in the resulting shot? This guy here has three hands. Liza and Paul are having fun outside during their winter break. Liza is learning how to skate on the lake, and Paul is skiing in the forest. Who's not smart? Liza. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. Unlucky Liza. Paul, meanwhile, returns to the dorm. He's starving. So he opens the fridge that he shares with his roommate Nick. Right away, Paul begins to yell at his roommate. Nick, you stole my food again! Nick replies, You're a liar. I didn't. Paul says, Well, I have proof. I took a picture of our fridge before leaving. Can you tell who's lying by just looking at these two images? Take a closer look. The shelves are signed. These two shelves are Nick's, and the other two, Paul's. These three items disappeared from Paul's shelves. This means that the liar is Nick, and it's time for a new roommate. Meanwhile, Liza and Paul are having a date tonight. Apparently, the lady on the lake survived the cracking ice. But Liza's dorm is situated on the opposite side of this maze. Can you help Paul pass through this labyrinth to meet his date? Here is the only way out. The college dean, Nina, hires a handyman to transform the area around the campus. That's what she says. Your task is to put seven benches. I will triple your paycheck if you find a way to put exactly six rows of benches in a straight line. Also, each row should have three benches in particular. Can you help the handyman accomplish this task? He should put three benches as the vertices of an equal triangle. Three more benches should be put at the center of each side of triangle. And the last bench should be at the center. The handyman gets to work and goes to the storage room to grab some tools. Can you find two identical items? Hey, here they are! The handyman is bored, so he starts a quiz game. He keeps asking the same question to every student he meets. But each time, the answer is different. Can you guess the question? The handyman's question is, how are you doing? Hudson's teenage daughter, Jill, failed a test. 
So he makes her stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Meanwhile, Nina's teenage daughter Jules got sick. So she spends the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Both daughters come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent was deceived? Nina. Take a look at the window. It's raining heavily. Jules has wet hair and dirty water on the edges of her jeans. It means she was outside. Uh Uh-oh. Liar. The next morning, Hudson and Nina both wake up earlier to prepare breakfast for their families. Nina is making sandwiches. Meanwhile, Hudson is making eggs with bacon. Who's wrong? Hudson, oops, he forgot to turn on the stove. Hudson is walking to work through his favorite park and sees this scene. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There are two suns in the sky. Uh Uh-oh, Tatooine. Hudson arrives at his class and starts with a witty riddle. Can you tell me which part of London exists in France as well? The correct answer is the letter N. A huge drama is taking place in a diner next to the college campus. The owner of this place screams, where's my money? It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear that they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no customers today. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees trying to spot the thief. Liza is wearing a pair of stylish sunglasses and brandy clothes. Mike is also wearing some costly designer clothes and an expensive phone. Robin is wearing a regular dress and fake jewelry. Who took the money? Nobody. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says, open. That means that people on the street saw the closed sign on the other side. That's why nobody entered, and the cash register remained empty. Hudson finds a secret hallway in the basement of the college building. He decides to explore it and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out and grab him. One of them says, Hey, we've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You can't take it. Hudson notices that something's wrong with these guys. Can you figure out what exactly? Well, they seem fake. This zombie is wearing sneakers. The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third zombie has a price tag attached to his saber. Ah, busted! Molly is very nervous. She met a great guy online, and today they're having their first offline date. They have never seen the pictures of each other. Their date will take place in an old part of the campus at night. Molly arrives at the meeting point and sees two guys. The first one says, It's a weird place for a date, but I'm glad to see you. And the second guy says, It's me! I couldn't wait to see you! You're even more pretty than your photos. One of them is Molly's date, while the other one, a dangerous criminal. Can you guess who is who? It's the second guy who is dangerous. He mentioned photos, but Molly didn't send her online crush any pictures of herself. Therefore, the first guy is her date. Molly and her date want to go to a local nightclub, but the guard can't let them in without a password. He gives the guys a hint. The more places I go, the less you can see. Who am I?
Darkness is the password. It's a beautiful weekend day. Nina is working in her garden. Suddenly, someone attacks her from behind and she faints. Later that day, she gets better and talks to the police. Nina suspects one of her neighbors. Some of them don't really like her. Officers question three suspects. Bill says, I've been planting trees with my daughter all day long. Sabrina says, I was just peacefully watering my gorgeous flowers and continue to do so. Luke says, I rarely leave my house, so I don't even know this woman. Who's suspicious? Sabrina's garden hose isn't even connected to the water source. It's just lying on the ground. Therefore, her story is fake. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.